We've prepared you a small presentation on intermaxillary fixation. Now this is something that we all use as part of our practice. But with the uh, unfortunate pandemic that's going around now, um, we're having to, I think as a specialty, uh, go back to some of the more traditional techniques and rely more heavily on them to simplify our fracture patterns um, potentially for revision after the pandemic is over. So how would you define uh, IMF? Well, in essence, it is using uh, the dental occlusion uh, to uh, essentially locate the facial bone uh, fracture configurations together. In some ways, you're using the teeth as surrogate bone pins. Uh, and if one of your endpoints of a successful result is a good occlusion, then you can, in some ways, control a malunion. So when would you use it? Well, ideally, uh, you'd have a favorable fracture. So that means that when you reduce the teeth together to get a stable dental occlusion, that the bone ends are dragged together in more or less the correct anatomical position. It's not so good when the fractures are unfavorable. Now you can divide those into horizontal and vertical unfavorable, depending on what aspect of the mandible uh, you look at. But in essence, if you put the teeth together and the bone ends don't reduce, then it's an unfavorable fracture. And this is much more likely if the fracture itself is, is grossly comminuted um, and uh, you cannot uh, uh, achieve a, a, a good reduction. It's fairly cheap uh, and you use minimal equipment required and you can also do this under local anaesthetic. Um, it's a bit more of a problem to use to wire someone's jaw together if they've got a history of epilepsy or if they're, they're, they're vomiting a lot because that is essentially very risky. And it depends uh, on strong patient cooperation to keep, to keep the wires clean and to, act, in fact, to actually tolerate uh, the, the uh, technique. Um, unfortunately, if there is an element of instability of the fracture ends or you can't reduce, it's, it's not ideal and you get, a, in essence, a controlled malunion. And the wires themselves loosen periodically and need tightening up. Now, that's not good in the COVID era because, you know, you're going to have to see these patients potentially again uh, in outpatients. And you need to remove the wires at, at six weeks. If you're not careful, um, you can extrude uh, the teeth um, or drag the teeth um, out of their uh, normal position which is painful and of course feeding is difficult though interestingly historically when we used to wire uh, patients jaws together uh, to lose weight um, you can liquidize Mars bars if, if you want and oral hygiene is a problem. Occasionally we use it in uh, post-operatively um, especially if there's a, a, a condylar neck fracture which we're managing in a closed manner um, and we would often use elastic um, uh, IMF rather than than um, wire IMF. Wire IMF is largely something that we reserve for grossly destroyed fracture patterns that um, you're looking for every stability that you can get. So what techniques are available to you? Well there are a whole host of techniques uh, which are largely um, forgotten and we tend to rely on eyelet wires, Leonard buttons more so and arch bars with occasional use of IMF screws. Um, we're going to also discuss the newer hybrid IMF and don't forget good old-fashioned orthodontic brackets although they are aerosol generating to put them on so you might not find uh, that that's a good idea in the current environment. So what's interdental wiring concerned? Well the easiest one to do uh, is this one where you simply lash a wire around the tooth and, and, and make a long uh, tail on it and then simply wire the arch uh, uh, together as y y you see. It's, 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 it's actually quite um, a versatile technique and, and very rapid to put on and very straightforward but it does suffer from uh, uh, not being able to use elastic wires uh, and uh, also the wires aren't too easy to cut in the event of an emergency. Historically eyelet wires were um, the favoured option um, and essentially what they do is they apply a means of uh, producing a loop, the Americans call them ivy loops, um, in between the interproximal areas of key uh, teeth uh, which allow uh, you to then pass a wire from upper jaw to lower jaw as you can see um, in the diagram. We tend to use 0.5 gauge wire um, uh, and this is uh, used um, 
in, in the manner. The rules of the game are you must have a dental contact point between the adjacent molars or premolars and I tend to go for the the first and second premolars first. It's much easier to put the wire on. And just as in Leonard Buttons, if you don't have a contact point between the adjacent teeth, then you will simply uh, produce rapid orthodontics and pain as you drag the teeth um, together. This is the, the sequence that you would do. So starting from uh, number one in the bottom left-hand corner, you put the two wires in between the teeth. Now I tend to go for the premolars rather than the molars. And you then pass the back wire through the tooth behind, the front wire and the tooth in front. You then pass the uh, back loop through the eyelet wire and then you tie the wire off. Now you always tie the wire in a clockwise direction by convention and you pull uh, the wire first steadying the dental arch so you don't distract any fractured ends um, and then you tighten. You don't pull and tighten at the same time. The lost art of intermaxillary wiring as seen in the middle diagram um, is it's quite helpful to put a small hook in the bottom of the wire. It makes it much easier to pass um, through the eyelets that you would see. And then you have a zigzag wiring which then pulls the teeth um, together. As far as single teeth are concerned, the clove hitch uh, wire is used as you see here. And that's actually quite a, a difficult thing uh, to do. Um, and I must confess I would tend to go for an arch bar in this way. Um, this is the Leonard button which is a modification of the eyelet wire which allows elastic intermaxillary fixation um, uh, uh, to be uh, achieved. Now um, I've got a small um, operative um, video here so we pass the wire through it very much like an eyelet wire and you'll see here my assistant is grabbing the end of the wire through and you'll see that they are quite traumatic to the gum. Now if the wire is bent then cutting the wire at an angle um, makes a sharp point and makes it much easier for the wire to pass through the uh, um, interproximal uh, embrasures and try not to macerate the papillas of the gum too much. You then pass it under the Leonard button. Now here is, th here is the trick. So cover the end of the wire so that you don't snag your fingers in them because these are very dangerous things uh, to have uh, in operative surgery. And then you put the first bend like that right down and you spread the wire wide so that when you turn you get nice tight coils. Once you've done that, you pull tightly. So always cut wire when you pull tightly. And you'll notice how I'm steadying the mandible with my left hand, which prevents the fracture being distracted. You then put your Lawson Tate uh, wire bend right in, and you pull, having steadying the fracture. And as you pull, you then turn. Never pull and turn at the same time. That is how you snap the wire. And you want to look at the base of the wire to make sure that you're not not wiring on wire, wiring on the curve which makes the wire snap. And then you curve the wire with a curve clip in the same direction as you twisted the wire, i.e. clockwise. IMF screws are rapid to um, apply and you put them in between the uh, root forms of the, the teeth and um, that isn't always possible as you'll see in the picture x-ray in the bottom right you'll see that uh, someone has managed to put the IMF screw right through uh, the teeth so be aware that that is a theoretical risk but they're rapid to apply easy to to apply even in in, in an incorrect manner and hence why um, they're very popular but the fact that you don't drill with them in the COVID uh, times actually might uh, make that a more attractive offer. They're not really that well tolerated over long periods of time and, and I think they loosen quite heavily so personally I don't favour them but I know a lot of my colleagues around the country and in fact around the world um, do. As far as arch bars are concerned they come in two different types those which you take an impression which we'll discuss shortly and make customised and those which you make uh, yourself out of, of the packet. And there are various different types, the Eric arch bar, the Jelenko arch bar um, that you see pictured here. And they are simply wired around um, each tooth 
uh, and uh, around the wire arch bar, one above, one below the arch bar, and around the tooth with 0.5 millimeter um, wire. This is a customized arch bar that you see here. Um, if you look out, uh, carefully, uh, there are um, uh, loops around the arch bar which you can, can put a wire through. Um, I would normally have what I call cleats, which are little hooks that you put into the wire, and I would avoid um, a wire going over the interproximal space. That usually uh, means that you can't actually locate the uh, fracture. If, if the um, uh, mandible is fractured, you have to do some work first. Uh, you have to saw the plaster model up and relocate the plaster in the correct position um, so that you can then uh, uh, check with the uh, maxillary um, uh, cast to make sure you have a good dental occlusion and then you can make the arch bar uh, accordingly. These have the advantage that uh, you can use the arch bar to reduce the fracture. Now we look at uh, the modes of attaching the the wire, and there are various different different ways of doing it. Personally, I like to put the arch bar on, thread the wire above the arch bar, um, i.e., gingerly through uh, the thing, then come back above the arch bar and simply uh, loop it like that. You'll see the first diagram; they go around again. That makes for a much more uh, tight uh, wire. Uh, if, if, if you can, but I think that's a little bit fiddly um, to, to do. The latest uh, craze is the hybrid IMF, which essentially is an arch bar that you screw in, and that has in some ways the best of both worlds, because you have an arch bar, um, but you uh, don't have to wire it, and the worst of both worlds in that you can damage uh, adjacent tooth roots. But they are worth thinking about. They're very useful as with all arch bars, when you have pathological or physiological spacing within uh, the arch. So you might need uh, to, uh, to make good a gap. Um, and also if you've got um, a, uh, uh, an occlusion post-op and you have to put more elastics one side than the other to help the malocclusion, then they can be uh, somewhat easier to use and advantageous. And lastly, you want to think about using orthodontic brackets. Now, I accept the fact that this will be an aerosol-prone procedure, um, but that said, they're rapid to apply um, and easy to use, and you don't have so much uh, uh, problems with macerating the gingiva. Um, thank you very much for listening.